So in this session, we are creating a program using function modules. What is the requirement of the program? So we are creating a program to select the sales order data. For that, we are using customer number as input in the selection screen and displaying the sales order data output. So now tell me what are the steps in creating this program? What is the first step in creating this program? Okay, I'll also stay calm until you respond, you guys respond. First, we need to check whether there is a existing functional module related to our program or not. Mm, yeah, that is correct. But when we use that function module for business logic, right? For business logic or uh, to yes. validate something. So what is the first step? Yes. Design the selection screen. Yes. Design the selection screen, right? Define input parameters are select option. This is common for any program, right? What is the second step? Populate. Populate the default values if required. If you want to populate any default values based on the requirement, populate it. What is the event we use to populate the default values? Initialize. Initialization Initialize. event we use. Next. What is the next step? Validate the selection screen values. Mm. Input. Validate the selection screen inputs. Validate the selection screen inputs. What is the event we use? Add selection screen. Add selection screen. And what is the, there is one more addition for that selection screen. What is that? Add selection screen on. What is the difference? Add selection screen and add selection screen on parameter name. What is the difference between both events? when we we enter any value in the uh, parameter we use add selection screen on the remaining parameters will be blank yes right so when you enter the input when you enter the incorrect input right not any input when you enter the incorrect value in the input parameter when you raise a error message if you use add selection screen on it will uh, Disable the rest of the parameters and activate only the parameter with the error. Okay, so that user can enter value for that error input. So that user can correct only that input. If you use add selection screen, all the parameters will be enabled, right? For input, that is not required. So wherever the error, we need to enable only that parameter. In that case, we go for Add select screen on event. Okay. Clear. Here. Yes. When we validate the selection screen inputs, sometimes we need to check data from the database tables. For example, what is our input for this current program? Customer, right? So what is the table for customer da master data? K and A1. K and A1. So if you want to find the value entered here is a valid customer or not, you need to check that from K and A1 table. If that value is available in K and A1, that is a valid entry, right? Here, instead of writing select statement directly, what you can do? You can modularize that using a function module. 
what should be the input for that new function module to modularize it to create a function module to validate the customer uh, value so what should be the input customer number should be the input and what what it should return as output customer is valid or not yes or no right or you can return some other value true or false as output so inside the function module what is the logic you need to implement based on your importing parameter you need to write a select single statement on which table knm1 knm1 table and if the entry is available return true if the entry is not available return false as a exporting parameter so you need to define one importing parameter for customer and one exporting parameter for output status true or false here you need one function module so that if you need to validate same customer id in a different program do you need to uh, create a new function module again no just reuse the function module which you have already created uh, like before creating the function module what you need to do check is there any existing function module available to validate the customer how can you check that first thing by using keywords validate validate star customer like that if there are any relevant function modules you can find it go through the functionality test the function module and confirm whether it whether that function module is suitable for your validation requirement or not what is the other way go to knm1 table and check what do we check where user list where user list right it will show a lot of hints right there you can find some relevant function module by going through the description that is another way the third approach is you can check it in the sap community right is there any standard functionality available to validate the customer id by doing all this if you can't find anything then create a custom function module provide proper name for that function module so that other users can easily find the existing functionality so that they don't need to create one more time right so after validation what is the next step selecting the required data that time calling as business logic data selections loops right preparing final output everything i am considering it as a business logic here in the business logic please keep that in mind we should always try to modularize the code okay don't write complete logic in the same program modularize the code either by function modules class methods okay after business logic what is the next step getting the output displaying data display the output mm -hmm. or when you create a program it is not always to display the output sometimes we send data to other systems other external systems we send that data what is the option available to share the sap data with external systems standard RFC. recording route rfc mm -hmm. function modules mm -hmm. right okay and talking about external systems not transporting the data to the test system right from development okay. to test system i'm talking about sharing data to the external systems right okay sir. so we can send the data to the external systems through some interface concepts we call them as interfaces that's a separate concept we'll discuss that later okay either we can display the data as output or we can send the data to external systems via interfaces there are different types of interfaces that's a separate concept okay so this is the program design you have to think before going to implement any functionality first start with 
selection screen. Don't think about the entire program. First, assume your steps, what you need to do, and starts with the step one. What is the step one? What is step one? Selection screen design. Selection screen design. Until you finish the selection screen design, don't think about the rest of the functionalities. First, focus on only selection screen design. Okay. Okay, create. When you are checking the where is your list, right? You can see this description so that you can easily identify the functionality if you provide proper title of the program. Okay, that's why proper name, proper title is important. Executable program. Now, what is your first step? Designing the selection screen, providing the block name with frame, title. I'll provide some title for the text-001. What is this text-001? Text symbol. Text symbol. Okay. We call this as text symbol where we can create some reusable text in the program. Okay. Instead of hard-coded text. block b1 why we use this selection screen begin of block and end of block it creates the frame and a title for that frame right for look and feel just for look and feel there is no other functionality for this okay now define your uh, parameters what is our input here for this program, customer, right? Customer number. Let's, let's assume we are passing only single customer. Parameter, P underscore. Type, what is the type of the customer? You don't know? Go to the table and check. So when you are defining the parameter, if you don't know what is the relevant data element, go to the data dictionary table and check. KNA1 is the customer master data. So what is the data type available for uh, customer ID? KUNR. 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 That is the data element. Use the data element here. Okay. Is it completed? Selection screen design. You can also take multiple parameters. Activate. Can we test the program? Can we test the program at this point of time? No, sir, not needed. If there is a, an error that tab, in table activation, it shows. You need to test the selection screen, right? Test okay. the selection screen, whether it is working properly or not. Right? Your selection screen design, title is not displaying. Go to text elements. Create the title. And selection text is not displaying. 
customer ID, activate this text. Go back and test your program. Now it is displaying the header text and it is displaying the field label selection text. The selection screen design is working. And what is the next step? Check. First step is completed. It is working properly. Then only go for the second step. We need to populate any default values. If you want to populate, pop, pass that values here. Okay, in the initialization event. If you don't want to pass, what is the next step? Selection screen. Sorry, what? Add selection. Add selection. Validation. Right? Validation of the selection screen inputs. What is the event to use? Add selection screen on P underscore customer. Now, how to validate the customer ID? How to validate the customer ID? We have already discussed how many ways we can validate the selection screen input. If it is mandatory parameter, we can validate whether there is some value available in the selection screen or not. And once the value is available, we need to validate whether that is a valid value or not. In general, how to validate the customer ID? If you know that uh, whatever the customer ID entered is valid or not, if P underscore cost is initial then what we need to do validation type one message enter customer ID so we need to make sure there is some customer ID available type E error message what do you mean by else else means opposite to first condition is not initial means there is some value if there is some value what we need to do If customer entered some value, then what you need to do? You need to validate that value, right? Yes or no? Or you can you can keep you can keep both uh, validations as a separate conditions, but you can also use, simply use else statement here. And if in between this, what you need to write? You need to validate the value, whether it is a valid value or not. Select single owner from which table? What is the master data table for customer ID? Yeah. Let's assume you don't know. You don't know what is the master data table for customer. What is the data you are trying to select? Sales order data, right? What is that header, yes. header table for sales order? VBAK. VBA. So do you have a customer number here? Search for customer number. Customer is here, Kunar. How can you find master data for this field? Now we are in VBAK. How can you find master data table for this field? Domain level. Simply go to foreign. foreign, foreign. Oh, foreign. What is the check table? KN1. Right? KN1 is the check table. That means KN1 is the master data table for customer okay you can check any of the field like that for example there is cost center field how can you check the master data for cost center select it and go to looks like no foreign key assigned the other option is go to the data element go to the domain go to value range csks Okay, cost center master record. So here you need to validate the cost center values. Okay. Now you know the master data table. Now, now write select statement on that. Select single 
corner from uh, which table kna1 into uh, what type of data object we need to take here variable work area or internal table variable variable sorry why it is a single field we are just selecting a single field right so that's why variable is enough we are selecting name also now what is a suitable option we need to take what is it we need to take work area we need to take work area uh, when you are using inline declaration you, do, you don't need to worry about it it will automatically create the relevant object into the data sorry variable is enough right lv underscore customer mm, what is the condition where what is the condition kunar equal. kunar equal to whatever the parameter P. we are using p Cust. underscore Cust. Cust. what is mandatory when we are using select single passing primary key then. passing all the primary keys of the table what are all the primary keys available in kna1 go to kna1 table forget about ma and dt you know right why we use ma and dt for client dependent data so what is the actual primary key here kunar okay there is only one primary key that means this is correct if sy hyphen sub rc equal to zero what does that mean can we raise the error message no sub rc equal to zero means it is valid it is the customer yeah, yeah it is successful the customer id is there in a kn1 table what you need to check not equal to zero if it is not equal to zero then enter valid customer type which one e error message okay instead of writing these hard coded messages right what you need to do create a text symbol go to text uh, go to text symbol i'll create a text symbols here instead of writing hard coded value See, the message and the title both are same, right? Here in the error message also, I am using enter customer ID text only. That way, do, do I need to create the text symbol again? I will just no, reuse the same. Okay. Yes. Enter valid customer. This is a different message. Press enter and activate the text. Here, in place of this hard coded text, what I what I'll use text hyphen zero one for this second text text hyphen triple zero two. Okay. Now, my selection screen validation is completed. Now test this. Test the program whether your validation is working properly or not. Execute. I'm not passing any value. Execute it. It is showing the message. Enter customer ID. Let me enter some random value. Execute. It is showing message, right? Enter valid customer. Because it is checking that value from the database table. Okay. Use F4 to find some existing customer IDs. Execute it is not displaying any error because this customer ID is available in KNA1 table. Okay, you can go to KNA1 and check this value if you want. So the selection screen validations also working fine. But what is my requirement? I want to modularize the validation so that I can use 
same function module in uh, different programs. The customer ID might be input in hundreds of programs, right? So wherever you need to validate the customer ID in every program, instead of writing this logic again, simply call the function module, okay? For that, we need to modularize the function module. How to create a function module? Let's assume there are no existing function modules to validate. We have already seen how to find the existing, okay? Let's assume we don't have any existing standard function modules. That's why we are going to create a custom function module. What is the transaction code to create a custom function module? SC37. SC37. Enter the function module name. Always assign some relevant name. Validate customer. So when we try to search, we can use these keywords to find for the existing function modules. Create the function module. Now tell me, what are the prerequisites to create a function module? First, we need to create function. We need a function group. We need a function group. What is the use of this function group? Function group is a container of the relevant function modules. Okay, we create, we keep all the relevant function modules in one function group. So, all the function modules will share the global data of that function group. Okay, so we need a function group. First, create the function group. If you have already a function group, use it. If it is relevant for your functionality, use that function group. Otherwise, create a function group first before creating a function module. How to create a function group? Here, go to function groups, create function group. Okay, you can display the existing function groups using this option. Okay, find option, you can find the all existing function groups. Create function group, observe very carefully. Create function group, you don't need to write any code. Okay, we just create the object. For example, Z demo, we'll use some name FM, that's it. Okay. Z demo FM that is my function group or Z demo sales. I'll assign all sales order related function modules to this function group. Okay, you can also use this for table maintenance generator, but you need to be careful when you are using the function group because all the function modules in that function group, right? When you try to change one function module, right, of this function group. Rest of the users cannot change other function modules of the same function group. It will be locked on your name until you complete your uh, function, function module changes. The rest of the users cannot change any of the other function modules within the same function group. Okay. Okay. Save. Save it in the local object. Your function group is created. What is the function group? Z demo sales. Created nothing but uh, that's not active. We need to activate the function group. Go to display function group. What is the name of your uh, function group? Remove the function module name first. So what is the function group name? Demo sales. Z demo sales. Display. What is the status of this function group? It is inactive. We just created it, but it is inactive, right? How to activate this? For that, there are two approaches. Okay. For that, for that, there are two approaches. Go to master program. Here you can see master program, right? Go to master program. You can observe include programs here. Yesterday, we have, I have explained you, right? It will automatically generate uh, two includes. One is for uh, global declarations. That is this include, top include, right? You can see function group name here, L. 
function group name and top. This for global declaration. This include program, it will create only for once. Rest of the include programs, it will create for each function module. For each function module, it will create one function, sorry, one include program. Okay. Now it is inactive. And also, these include programs also inactive. If you double click, these are also inactive. You need to activate all these programs. First, you need to activate the these two include programs and you need to activate the this master program or activate all together. Press activate, select all the rest of the include programs also or select the master program to activate. Activate it. It is saying the other two include programs are inactive. First activate these two. Go back. Activate this include program. It is already active. Now activate the master program. So your master program is also active. Now go back. What is the status of your uh, function group? It is active, right? Now you can use uh, this function group to create the function modules. Okay. What is the other approach to activate the function group? First, create the function group. Go to SC80, SC80. SC80 is the object navigator. Object navigator where you can where you can access uh, all kinds of objects here, in including. Uh, uh, function groups, programs, function modules, data dictionary objects, many more. Okay. Select function group name here and enter the function group. This is called object navigator SC80. Select what type of object you wanted to see. I wanted to see function group. Enter your function group name ZDemo sales. Enter, press enter. So it will show your function group. Right click on this and uh, activate this. So it will activate the complete function group. It is very simple to activate in SC80. Okay. SC80 is a object navigator where you can access all kinds of objects here including programs, tables, data elements, domains, everything. Okay. For that what you need to do? You need to select the package name. As of now what is the package we are using to stay, save the objects? Dollar to your local, local, local object that is dollar tmp that is a package name <clears throat> it will show all the objects saved in that package including tables tables you can find in data dictionary objects this one if you expand this inside that you can see database tables Right, domains, data elements, everything. These are all the different tables assigned to that particular package. Okay. Similarly, you can check programs, function modules, and everything. What is the transaction code for object navigator? SC80. SC80. Now create your function module, validate customer, create. Now, what is a function group? ZDemo sales. Make sure it is active. Provide the description of the function module. Validate customer ID. Save. Yes. Continue. Go to attributes. By default, it is selected as a remote, uh, sorry, regular function module. If you want to change it as remote enabled or update task function module, select the relevant option. Okay. So these are the three, three types of function modules I have explained uh, already in the yesterday's session. Now go to import parameter. What is the input we need to pass for this function module? We need to pass the customer number, whatever the customer number entered by the user, right? Whatever the customer ID value available. We are going to pass that value as input. So when you are defining the importing parameter, right? Please try to follow some naming conventions. Again, some naming conventions. Otherwise, it will allow any name. But always try to use proper naming standards. For importing parameters, what I'll do? 
for single value inputs like variable i use iv importing parameter with single value variable like input i use iv underscore customer or you can also use field name owner okay type what is the type you need to take here data element right what is the data element for kunar in same kunar is the data element do you want to pass any default value as input if you don't pass any value it will take this default value as input for that what type of what is the data type for kunar character type if you want to provide default value for character type you need to pass in the single quotes within the single quotes so it will act as a default input okay for now i am not passing now tell me is it a mandatory input or optional input optional input if it is optional input then how can you validate the customer id For to validate the customer ID, there should be some customer ID, right? Then what? There, then there is no uh, meaning in creating this function module. If you make it optional, if you pass some customer ID, then only we can validate. Otherwise, no, right? So I'm not selecting the optional. If you select the optional, it it will act as a optional input. Okay? But I want to make this as a mandatory input. Pass by value. This we use in uh, RFCs and BAPI function modules. You know, you know, you are, we already know that, right? Pass by value concept. It will automatically create its own memory within the function module importing parameters, right? It contains a separate memory. Now, I'm passing the customer number as input, and what I need to return as output, whether it is valid or not, right? For that. I'll define one more parameter. You can define any value, even you can return any customer name, anything, right? For in this example, I'll return status, true or false status. Mm. For exporting parameters, I'll define E. I'll follow this naming convention EV underscore output. EV underscore output type. Provide the relevant data type. What is the type you want to use? For example, I'll use char10 as a reference data element. It's a standard data element so that I can return a char10 or you can also use any other data element. Let's assume I'll take it as customer status. Changing parameter, I'm not using any changing parameter. You can also use changing customer ID as changing parameter, right? tables it is obsolete what is exceptions what is this exceptions parameter what is this exceptions parameter to raise errors exceptions are very important please remember exceptions in the function module are used to raise the errors within the function module within the function module how can you raise the exception first you need to define the exception here no input entered this is one exception if user did not pass any value to the customer id to the customer id field and the importing parameter i'll raise this exception okay how can you handle the exceptions How can you handle the exceptions in the program level? By using subRC check. By using SY subRC check. If SY subRC equal to 1, what does that mean? One error found. Exception 1 is triggered. Exception 1 is triggered. Okay. Looks like someone added some timeout setting. That's why it is closing automatically. Type Kunar.
Okay. So exceptions are to raise errors within the function module, right? If something wrong within the function module logic, how can you raise the errors using exceptions in the program level? We use error messages, right? If you need to handle any errors, we raise error messages in the program. But if it is in the function module, we raise exceptions. For example, define the exception. Right? This is how we need to define the exception. You can also define multiple exceptions. So depends on the exception number, sub RC value will be automatically updated. If the second exception, if the second exception is raised, what will be the sub RC value in the program level? Sub RC value will be set to 2. Ooh. If the 10th exception is raised, sub RC value will be set to 10. Yeah. If sub RC equal to 0 means no, no exceptions. No, no exceptions exception. raised within the function module. Again, except, exceptions are optional. If you want to handle the errors, you need to define the exceptions. Otherwise, you don't need to define the exceptions in the function modules. Okay? Clear? Now, go to source code. Here you need to write your code by using these importing parameters and you need to return the output to exporting parameter. What I've used, I've used the incorrect name, ev underscore output. This, this is what I wanted to use. For exporting parameters, try to use ev, okay? If it is a work area like output, we are returning a record, not a single value. Then how do, how you need to use? Let's take like yes. Okay. Yes means generally we use for work area like record, one complete record. For internal table like output, we use ET. ET for exporting parameter. Okay. Since it's a single variable, we use EV. Same for importing parameters. We use IV for single value. IS for one complete record and IT for internal table like input. Okay. So depends on the requirement, we use the relevant naming standards. Go to source code. Now, what is the input for us? IV underscore Kunar, right? For example, I just want to show you how to raise the exceptions. If IV underscore Kunar is initial, what does that mean? If importing parameter is empty, what we need to do? We cannot validate, right? If there is no value, we cannot proceed further. What we need to do? We need rise, to raise exception. Raise exception. What is the keyword to raise the exception? This one, rise, okay, rise exception, dot. So it will automatically terminate the uh, rest of the process and it will raise the exception. So you can handle this exception in the calling program by using sub RC check, okay, clear? So this, this is how we raise the exceptions within the function module okay to handle errors within the function modules we use uh, exceptions okay now if there is no exception it will proceed further or you can also use condition like this else or you can keep it as a separate block separate code block select single hmm, what is the code you need to write the same code whatever you have already implemented in the program so instead of writing there, uh, just modularize here. Okay, what is the input here? 
it is a selection screen input right we should not use that here what we need to use whatever the importing parameter we have defined okay clear if sy hyphen sub rc equal to 0 what we need to do We don't raise an exception. We don't write it. Not raise equal it. to zero. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We need to return the status, right? Whether it is a valid customer or not, like true or false, or valid or invalid, any value, right? Whatever the value you wanted mm. to pass. If sub r c equal to zero, that means populate the exporting parameter. That is important. Otherwise, you cannot handle that in the program. How can you know whether uh, the customer is successful or not? By only checking the output, right? Since it is, uh, or I, I, I'll simply pass X, okay? Else means sub RC not equal to zero. In that case, I'll leave it blank, okay? In that case, even else part also not required if it is empty if it is uh, not equal to zero means it won't populate x so it will be blank blank means we assume it as a invalid customer okay everyone clear is everyone clear what are we doing here see exceptions are to raise the error okay Exceptions are to raise the error within the function module. Okay. If the validation is failed, we don't raise the exception. We, we return the proper status, whether it is successful or failed. Okay. Clear. Now activate the function module. Function module is created. What is the next step? Checking functional. Test the, function, test, the uh, yeah. test the function module. Execute. I'll enter some random number. Execute it. Did not return any value, right? It's blank. Yes, sir. That means it may not, it may not be a valid customer. Let me enter. Uh, I think 2070. Last time I executed. Execute. It is returning X. That means it is a valid customer ID. How can you check that here? 2070. Execute the function module. You can debug the function module. IV underscore corner. There is a value, right? So it won't trigger this exception. Okay. F5. The uh, select statement is executing. So we are setting, since sub rc is equal, we are setting the value to x, okay? Let's remove this value and execute. Anyway, it won't allow you to execute because it's a mandatory parameter. You can check this difference in when you are uh, calling in the program. I did not provide any value. It is blank, right? Customer ID is blank. What is the expected uh, output? F5 is triggering the exception because we did not pass any value in the input parameter it is rising the exception it's not executing further it is terminating the program execution what is the exception it is raised no input uh, entered uh, right it will it will raise the exception now call this pro, call this function module in the program it is working as expected right yes or no yes sir now I'll remove this part here. I'll keep the message as it is to display the error message. I'll call my function module here. If it is blank, I don't want to call this functionality, right? Because I don't want to hit the database. If, because there is no value. I don't want to hit the database. I'll validate that in the program itself. If there is a value, 
then I'll make use of this function module. Go to pattern, enter the function module name. You can also set shear. If you don't know the function module name, validate customer star F4 to find the existing function modules. Right, you can see the function module name here. Okay, so I am able to find the function module, right, by using these keywords. When I click the pattern, enter the keyword and press F4. It will show all the available function modules matching with these keywords, right. So this is the function module what we have created, right. Select the function module or just enter, if you know the function module name, directly enter the function module name. Select it and click on continue. So this cursor position is important. Please keep your cursor in a proper position where you want to place this function module. Okay. So what you have observed here, whatever the importing parameter that is available in the program, how it is displaying here, importing parameters is displaying under exporting. Exporting parameters are displaying under importing. Okay. Enable this exporting parameter and enable the exceptions. How many exceptions it is displaying? How many exceptions it is displaying in here? Three. Three. Mm. First two we have mm. defined, right? These two exceptions we have defined. The third exception is uh, by default exception, right? What uh, other than one and two? Okay, if exception one triggered, sub RC will be one. Second trigger, sub RC will be two. Third exception triggers, sub RC will be three. If no exceptions trigger, sub RC will be zero. Okay, yeah. so exceptions are used to raise errors within the function module. If there is any error or uncertain statements executed, we raise the exceptions. Okay, we pass input. Make sure whatever the data type you are using this importing parameter and whatever the variable or parameter you are passing here, both should refers to same data type and length. You need to make sure that otherwise what will happen? What will happen? If you pass variable or parameter with a different data type to the function module, it what will happen? Work. It won't work, but what will happen in the program if you execute it? I have shown you, right? It will throw runtime yes, error. Where you can mm -hmm. check the runtime errors? ST22. ST22. Okay, you need to make sure yeah. whatever the parameter you have defined in the function module and whatever the input value you are passing in the program, both should refer to the same data type, right? Check the function module. What is the type you are using here? Kunar. Double click on this. Character 10. Right? Now go to the program. What is the type you are using here? For program parameter, Kunar. It is also referring to same data type. Kunar uh, character 10. Right? Then no issue here. What about the output? EV output. Go to the function module. What is the relevant data type you are using here? Character 10 use the same data element to define the output parameter data because inline declarations are not going to work here output type what is the type you need to use same data type whatever you are using in the function module otherwise what will happen to return the output to return the output i am using this variable right if sub rc is not equal to 0 means any exception is raised. If sub rc equal to 0 means no exceptions are raised. Then or I can also simply check like this. If lv underscore output. What is the, what is the value we are returning? x, right? If it, is, if it is a valid customer, we are returning X. Otherwise, what are we returning as output? Blank. Blank. Is in shell. Then, 
writes the error message. If output is initial means uh, whatever the customer we are passing is an invalid customer. So we are not returning any value. In that case, rise a error message. Let's test this functionality. There is a syntax error. Okay. If we did not close this and if okay now it is closed for this for this uh, this is the if and yeah, if control okay activate the program test the validation functionality test the validation functionality keep a breakpoint here if i don't pass any input We are checking that validation here. It will raise an error message. If I pass any input, 2070, it's a valid vendor, I think. It should be available in KNA1 table. It will go to the function module execution. What if I press F5, what will happen? And if we, what is the difference here, F5 and F6? F5 will take us into the function module code. We can debug the function module code. If you press F6, it will complete the function execution in a single step. Okay. Single step. If you press F6, if you don't want to debug all the other, uh, if you if you don't want to debug the complete function module logic, which one you need to choose? F6. F6 if you want to debug the complete logic of the function module, press F5. F5. Go inside the function module and debug line by line. Right and return the sub R zero. We are returning X as output. For example, you are uh, somewhere here. Go to go to previous statement. Somewhere here in the seventeenth line. But I don't want to debug further. I got what I want. I just want to return to the main program. Which key you need to press? F seven. F seven. We'll we'll return back to the calling program. LV output is X. That means no error right let me pass some invalid input 20 it may not be available let's execute f5 sub r c equal to 4 that means exporting parameter is empty f5 will take us to the calling program lv output is empty then we are raising the error message Okay, so wherever you need to validate the customer, you don't need to worry about the business logic, you don't need to worry about the table, you don't need to worry about anything, just call this function module and pass the input, return the output. Okay, it is very simple example, but in general, we create more complex functionalities, we write hundreds of lines of code in real time, right? It will reduce a lot of time, right? It will save a lot of time and it will reduce a lot of duplicate code if you can reuse the existing functionalities. Okay? Clear? So, going, going forward, whatever the program you create, please try to modularize using function module until we uh, worked on object oriented ABAP programs, right? Also, I'll show you one important option here. Before going to use any standard function modules, right? SAP provided function modules, make sure it is uh, released. Here, here you can see function module release. What do you mean by release? Release means SAP completed the development and there are no further changes on the functionality. There are there, there are no further changes on the functionality. Okay, that is that's what release means. So SAP is guaranteed. SAP is providing some guarantee that uh, they are not going to change in future. They are not going to update anything on this functionality. It is uh, released and ready to use. Okay, if it is not in re released status, means SAP might be doing some R and D or that is being in testing or there might be future changes for that function module. 
what will happen if there are future changes for example this is not a released function module i'll add i'll add one more parameter iv underscore some test type some char one and i'm making it as a mandatory parameter i'm making it as a mandatory parameter and activate it anyway i am not using it in the business logic let's assume we did some changes right and we added some mandatory parameters the function module is changed right one new parameter is added to the function module there might be some other business logic also added here now what will happen let's execute the program now i'll reopen the program let's execute the program again We'll enter valid customer only. What happened? Gives runtime error. So it is throwing runtime error. Why? Check the error analysis in ST22, or you can also check here. Go to error analysis. What it is saying? When calling the function module, one of the required parameter not specified this parameter we are not passing any input in the program right display we are not passing that parameter here right there is a change in the function module someone added one more new parameter to the function module we are not aware of it and we did not change that in the program according to that new parameter so what will happen now your program is not going to work right so if it is released means there is no future scope of adding new parameters or new changes to the function module right so that's why we need to make sure the standard function modules are always released in the release status so that there is no future updates for that function module if there is any future update what will happen if you are using that function module in your program that may not work that may throw runtime errors, right? Is everyone clear? Released means, yes, so SAP is guaranteeing that uh, there is no future changes for this function module. You can use it without any doubt, okay? How can you check that released status? Since there is a change in function module, what you need to do? You need to update that change. You need to call the function module again in the program. You need to call the function module again in the program. Go to pattern, enter the function module name, provide these two inputs. Now we have two important parameters. You need to provide two inputs. Whatever the changes you have applied to the function module, you have to call the function module again in your program and make sure you are passing all the parameters. But now I'll remove this uh, additional parameter because there is no use of it. Import, delete the parameter, and activate the function module again. So your program should work now. Please remember, whenever you are trying to change any function module, what you need to do? What is the prerequisite? Check where is your list, where this function module is being used. If I apply change to this function module, is it going to impact any of the existing programs? You need to do that analysis. Go to where is the list, check this function module is being used in one program. So you need to make sure what are the changes you are doing and what is the impact on the program. Okay, clear? Is everyone clear? Let's see the release status of the standard function module. I think that should be somewhere in the attributes. Hmm. 
what is the fun what is the status of this function module not released not released so there might be future enhancements future changes to this function module go to attributes check this is also not released so we should be careful when we are using a function modules without any re released status What about this function module? This is a released. Released. Released of 1997. Okay. So before going to use function modules with not released status, right? Check with your lead or someone. Okay. Hey, can I use this function module uh, since it is it is not in re released status? Okay. So that's about uh, validation. Next step is we need to write the business logic, right? We'll continue that in the next session. We'll make use of a new function module to implement the business logic and call that function module in your program to execute the business logic. Accordingly, we'll create a, a new function module for output display. Okay. Next class is also very important to understand the complete process of the function modules. Okay.